boom. So if you want to install the tool, I mean, feel free to do the, to do the same. I, I will, I mean, go slowly so you guys can, can also install the tool. So I'm going to show here what is the personalizer, what is the input output, how do we install an uninstalled personalizer, and how do we use it. That's what we have. This is the first page of Trace When you run Trace on a trace, you will find a summary, a summary like this one. The, the way I read this summary is, is, is the following. I look at the total response time. For example, in this case, I see this trace includes 2.134 seconds, the total, the total response time. It, remember, the total response time has three components. It has elapsed time, idle weights, and it has some unaccounted for. In this case, I see most of the time coming from a last time. And this elapsed time has three components, CPU time, non-idle weights, and a last time unaccounted for. This is what I explained before. This time, three components. This time, three components. What is most of my time? Most of my time, in this case, is CPU. So if I were to analyze this one, I would be looking, possibly, a, who is spending the CPU time and moving to SQL tuning. So what is this trace analyzer? What is, what is this tool? Well, this tool is going to input one trace file that was created by Event 146. It will connect to a database, and it will produce a report. So this part is important. Trace analyzer requires to connect to a database. It doesn't have to be the same database where the trace was produced, but it is better if it is the same database. So some characteristics, uh, the first one is here, it's, it's free, download, and use. This is not part of the product, but it's, it's a free tool. I mean, we offer this as a free tool. So you can download this tool, and yes, it, it is free, so you can use it I mean, as many times as you want, it's, it's totally free. It works on 9.9, 10G, 11G, the same code. It works um, with, the three, with the three releases. It works on Unix, Linux, and Windows. Another thing that is important is unwrap source. The source code is there. You can look at the source code, you can digest the source code, you can do reverse engineering on the source code, that's perfectly fine. I, I know some, some um, entities, they have developed software on top of Trace Analyzer. They use the Trace Analyzer as a repository and they develop software on top of it. That's perfectly fine. Okay? It installs on its own schema, so that means it's self-contained. Depending how you install this one, it's a small footprint. Well, when I say depending how you install this one, when, when you install this analyzer, you have the option to create all these taking objects as temporary tables or as permanent tables. Uh, I, I, some time back, I had this big customer, which was the government of France. They wanted to, to install trace analyzer with permanent objects. Why? Because they wanted to do some data mining on some traces. I didn't ask too much, I mean, what kind of traces were these, but they were doing data mining on the traces. So in that case, they were using like a huge database to pull a lot of traces and do some data analysis from the trace files. Which is fine, you can do that. Trace analyzer doesn't show application data. And I would never say Trace Analyzer is better than this other tool, because it is not. Trace Analyzer is a different tool. It, it has its, its, its own niche, its own use. What I can say is it provides more information than TK Pro, a lot more than TK Pro. For better results, you want to install Trace Analyzer on the same system where the trace was produced, but it's not mandatory. This is not a requirement. This is just something that gives you the best, the best output. Any questions so far? No? Okay, so in terms of input output, input is going to be one or many traces created by 10046, any level, 148 or 12, on limited size. If we want to analyze one trace file, I just pass the name of the trace file. If I want to analyze in one execution multiple traces, for example, if I want to analyze part of execution, where I may have files from the same server, multiple files, or I may have files from different rack nodes, I can consolidate all those files into one place. Then I create a text file that contains one line per file name. Just the name, not the path, just the name of those files. 
And what I input with trace analyzer is the name of that file that contains the names of the traces. Is, is that clear? <coughs> that is for parallel execution. What is the output? Uh, some reports with, with a lot of details, more than ticket problem. So if, if it is only one trace, I run trace analyzer passing the name of the trace file. It reads the 10046, generates some reports and some log files. If it is multiple traces, I create this control file that has, sorry, I can create this control file that has the name of many traces, and I pass as input the name of the control file. It reads all those files and produces these two reports. And what is the output? The main, the first page, it looks like this. I already showed you something like this. And, and it has many pieces, but it's very, if I show you, if I show you an example, so you can see it. It has many, many more pieces here and so on. Now, for each SQL statement that we find in the trace file, it's going to show you uh, times, totals, weights, binds, and the row source. Something like this. I can see uh, those times, then these are counts. This is similar to what we have on ticket prop, but it is more, we have more columns, we have more data points. It's showing you the weights, and when it shows you the weights, it, it tells you the weight is, what kind of weight is that, is that if it is idle, non-idle, and how much time we have. And then it shows you the row source plan. And it shows you all the columns that we have on the row source plan, they show like in HTML, plus some additional information that, that I will show you on, on a demo. Then what else do we have? And we also show this plain plan, and that's for the top SQL. When I say the top SQL, that means like on, you remember AWR is going to give you the top SQL in terms of several attributes, right? And Trace Analyzer is going to give you the, the top SQL in terms of elapsed time, a response time, or CPU time. Whatever is consuming most of those times is going to be highlighted as top SQL. And for the top SQL, it's going to show you, uh, in addition to the row source plan, it's going to show you the explain plan, and it's going to show you some pieces like these tables and indexes. It's going to give you information about your tables, about your logics. Meaning, it's going to say, uh, it's going to show you CBO statistics, it's going to show you the columns, some, some extra pieces that we usually require for tuning. And it's going to show you, if you have recursive SQL, it's going to show you how much time is spent by the first SQL that was created because of your SQL. Is, is that clear? It's going to show you also segment, meaning tables, indexes, partitions, IO, weight summary. So that means if you have this SQL that is reading data from partition table and it's consuming a lot of time in this particular partition, you're going to say, okay, you spend this much time on this <coughs> partition. Is, is that clear? So it has some granularity in terms of a it's telling you the time by segment. Now, it also shows relevant executions. Imagine I have this SQL and I execute the SQL 100 times. But every execution will have a different last time, right? Some executions are going to be fast, but there will be some executions that are taking a long time. Well, relevant execution is anything that is taking more than, than <coughs> traceable amount of time. The traceable is 10%. So you have any execution that is taking more than 10% of the last time of your SQL is also highlighted together with the first execution and the last execution. The first execution is important because from the first execution we care about these divines. If we want to understand why we produce this plan, we want to see which binds I use for the first execution. And the last execution is also important because if your SQL is either hanging or it gives you an error, you want to see which values I used the last time. Is that clear? So for every of those important executions, it's going to show you times, totals, weights, and binds, which is like an extra layer of granularity. Any, any questions with what is the content of stress analyzer? I mean, I'm going to demo so you can see it, but any questions so far? What, what, what do we get from this analysis? Go ahead. So does it, um, does it uh, show
Yes, uh, think this way. Uh, uh, Dress and Alize is a super set of Ticket Pro. Anything that you see on Ticket Pro is included in Dress and Alize, plus a lot more. No, but what I meant is that you were categorizing that. One, I know, I know, it doesn't show us those values. It will show those values, yes. But it really actually flag that by saying that, okay, this is an idle or Yes, yes it does. Okay? Okay, so how do we install Trace Analyzer? Trace Analyzer, I gave you the tool on, on the seed drive yesterday. You have the Trace Analyzer, is there. There is a directory that says tools. Trace Analyzer should be there. Okay. If later on you want to download the latest version, it's always on this node. I gave you yesterday the latest version, so you don't have to download it. You have the latest version. So we unzip that in our server, we connect a sys, and we execute this script. During the execution of this script, we are asked the following parameters. We are asked for the password that we want for this analyzer, which table spaces we want to use. Uh, we want to ask for the this analyzer user, because we're going to use the this analyzer. <coughs> and last, if we want those objects, the this analyzer objects, to be global temporary tables or permanent tables. How do we uninstall Trace Analyzer? We just execute this, this one script. So I'm going to go ahead and install Trace Analyzer so you can see how, how we install Trace Analyzer. And you can do the same with any 9.9, 10G, 11G database. You can do exactly the same. So I'm going to install Trace Analyzer on my laptop. But I, I could be using my, my Linux machine. It doesn't matter. So I'm just going to make it here because it's in there here. So. So the, the first step I'm going to on seed. The analyzer is here. I need to put here my my SQL plus uh, alias. So it is here my SQL plus. So I just run my SQL plus and I do install create create. That's all I do. Install PHP, that is a script. So we're going to say, first step, Trace Analyzer is trying to uninstall a prior version. You're going to say, you know what, I'm going to try to uninstall a prior version. In other words, I'm going to drop user Trace Analyzer and TRCA admin. I agree, yes I agree, I hit return. So it's, it's dropping a prior installation, so it's cleaning, it's, it's, it's cleaning the environment. It's saying, okay, specify a password that you want for this tool. I cannot change the user. The user is, is, is this one here, PRCA ANLCR. Password, I specify whatever password I want. And you're going to say, okay, what is the default table space that you want? So I only have one option here on my system, which is users. And for temporary table space, I only have one option, which is 10. So I'm going to say, who is going to be using Trace Analyzer? What I'm going to be doing here is going to assign this grant. I'm going to say grant PRCA user role to this one user. In my case, I'm going to say, oh, my user for Trace Analyzer is going to be this, this account. And the last question is, what type of repository do I, do I want? I can say a global temporary, or I can say permanent. In my case, I, the default comes with a, a temporary, which is fine, so I just hit enter. So now it's in the process of installing the tool. Where? On my local database. But I, I can be doing this on any database. So why do I have to assign it to one computer application is only? I mean, if I have multiple schemas that I want to trace. Is OK. When you have multiple schema, you start with one here, and after you finish the installation, you can grant PRCA, PRCA user role to those, those extra users. Yeah. It's just restricted in who can use this analyzer. So it says here, if TRCA users, they must be granted a TRCA user role before using this tool. We did with one, but if we have more than one, then we can do that here. Overhead, well, the tool is, as you don't, I mean, right now the tool is installed, but it's not using anything. It's, it's not monitoring anything. So it, it's not like something that is running all the time. So you only run the tool when you actually need the tool. Right. I put my, my own user. You can put any 
any user. You can, if you have an application user, that is the one that you put. If you don't know anything, just hit enter and. Hmm? Where is the script? The, the script is TRCA on the file that I gave you here. Uh, on the tools, tools, we have TRCA. That is the one that just, just installed. And it just finished. It says TA create completed, installation completed successfully. Okay, so everything looks fine. That was the installation. Who needs some time to finish the installation? Who is doing the installation and requires some time to finish it? Any of you guys are doing the installation? No? Okay. Into what? Okay, the question is, can we install the tool on a development database and use and um, basically process a trace from production? The answer is yes, but they will, you will start missing some pieces. Okay, let me try to explain this way. If, if my development instance is a copy of production, meaning do I have the same objects, you are mostly fine. Mostly fine, because when trace analyzer runs, it's trying to find those objects. For example, if, if the SQL makes a reference to table D1, D2, and D3, it's going to be looking for those objects. If we find those objects, it gives you the statistics for those objects. Of course, the statistics that you give you are going to be from development, and not necessarily the same as, as the one that you want in production. So it's like, okay, it's going to match those objects, but not necessarily what you want. Now, if you want to use the objects from production without installing trace analysis in production, yes, you can do that. I want to explain how we do that. Basically, what we need, I need to take a snapshot of the data dictionary from production, some objects, not everything, just take a snapshot and put that snapshot on my development instance. So when I run trace analyzer, instead of using the data dictionary from, from the local instance, it uses the snapshot, okay? And it's very easy, I'm going to, I'm going to do that, I'm going to demo, I mean, how do we, how do, we do that? Okay, so that is how we install Trace Analyzer, how we uninstall. Now, how do we use Trace Analyzer? How, how do we use this? Okay, in order to use Trace Analyzer, first I need to create a trace file, right? So let's, um, let's just create a trace file. So let's start with something here. So let me close these files. I may want to use one of these files, or I want to use the ones that we had on, on on, I can use either ACS or SPN, the lab that we did yesterday. Which one I use, ACS or SPN? Does it matter? Hmm? ACS, okay. If I open ACS, when I was here on ACS, I, went, I was doing this, uh, this DB something, I was running basically this demo, right? Remember this demo that, that we have here? Okay, I'm gonna be using that demo so what else do I need from here? Also this morning, when I was running my test, and I had this test here, I turned trace on, on this script, on a, the evolve plan, I was turning trace on this way. So I'm gonna do the same here. So I'm gonna go back to my last ACS. I'm going to open SQL Plus here, right? I'm going to say, turn trace on. Actually, I'm going to connect as myself first, because I create everything here. So I turn trace on, then I do demo one. Demo one was doing something here, it's going to take some time. I'm going to do it again, or I'm going to do demo two, doesn't matter. Just running some SQL. My transaction is, is, is tracing right now. And then I'm going to exit my session. Now, how do I find the trace file? Do you remember how, how we find the trace file? I have to say show parameters. 
user dot base, right? So that is that is the directory for my traces. So now I can come here to my computer, and I'm going to be looking for that directory. I can say uh, D A P P C C R A Diagnostics R D M S Oracle Oracle, and we should have something that says trace. And if I order this for the most recent files, which is already there, this should be my trace file, right? So I know the name of the trace file, and that's all I need. I need the name of the trace file. So how do I run trace analyzer? I was here on my tool. These files are from the installation. See, the installation was fine. I just removed the log files. I don't need all those files. I connect as my user. Remember, this user has the trace analyze user role assigned, so I can do this. And I say run. That is the tool, run trace analyzer. And I pass here the name of the trace file. I don't have to say the file, I just say the name of the trace file. So right now I'm saying, okay, I am analyzing this, this trace file. <coughs> If the, if the trace file was taking some time to run, I can always take this one from here. And run it from here, and it's saying nothing. So that means most probably it's finished or it's finishing. So it's coming with nothing. Nothing in the log file. Okay, so in the meantime, what this one completes, uh, do you guys have any questions so far? No questions? I'm going to close some of these windows. Okay, it's taking some time. There's more time than, than TK Pro, that is for sure. I mean, why? Because it's putting everything on the database and it's doing the analysis inside the database. TK Prof is doing everything in memory. The problem with doing everything in memory is that when you're trying to analyze a large file, well, you don't have, you don't have unlimited memory. So TK Prof with large files may turn on. Trace Analyzer doesn't turn on because it's, it's using the database as a repository. Okay, so it's finished here. So it says, okay, finish, create some files, and it says, it says this is the name of my file. Well, where is my file? If I do post and do directory, I can see right now I am in this directory. That's my local directory. And it created the file there. So my file is here. This is what it created. This is a new file. This is the output trace analyzer. If I open this file, what do I find? I find several files. The one that I want to see, the trace analyzer, is the one that is on HTML. So let me start with this file here. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. Okay, so what do we see? This is the main menu, but this is the first page. And it says, okay, you have the trace analyzer report out of this trace file, that is the name of the file. That is the size of the file. This file, this trace file, includes 22 seconds. So that means that was my, my, my time. I mean, the, the tracing time was 22 seconds. It started here at 10.56, 42, and it finished here. So I have the timestamps on my trace file. Then, if it's the first time you use trace analyzer, you may want to read this, this uh, set of acronyms. So if I open this set of acronyms, I'm going to say it's going to define all those terms. That is like read once, and then you don't need this anymore. So I'm going to close that. Then what is this part that we see here? This one is saying, out of the 22 seconds, 86%, which means 19 seconds, they were the last time. And from those 19 seconds, 12 seconds were CPU time. They match 52% of the time. Then you see some, some metrics that they look very similar to TK Pro, but they have extra columns. For example, here I see the overall time, which includes everything, recursive and non-recursive. So it's showing me the 22 seconds, which is the total time. And how do we decompose these times? 
And then I, I see several columns. Actually, I have a negative on account of time. Sometimes we see some negative times, like in this case. We have in one hand, we have 11 seconds negative time, and we have 6 seconds positive time. Remember, these are just numbers. So whenever we compute these numbers, sometimes we compute negative times. And that, is, that, that basically means we, we have some unaccounted time, but it, it works on our, in our favor. Anyway, let me just focus on what is important. Weight events. Here we have the following weights. In terms of weights, I have 14 seconds for this equal name message from client. And this is idle. I don't know if you notice when I was tracing, I do demo twice. I do demo and then do demo. There were some times where I wasn't timed and I wasn't doing anything. Those are the 14 seconds. Then I have the five sequential reads, which they happen to be what? These are non-idle, that's why they are here. If they are idle, they belong to this column. If they are non-idle, they belong to this column. And they are ordered by size. The most significant one is this one here. The second one is, is half a second, 0 0.4 of a second, and so on. Everything here is non-idle. Non the total time for non-idle is only 1.3 seconds. Is that clear? Then it's going to show you the total for non-recursive followed by recursive. For each one of these, it's going to show you times, counts, weights. Times, counts, weights. Now, if I go to the top, I, I was looking like in these pieces here. If I go and, and check the top SQL, it's saying my top SQL, meaning that the SQL that is taking the most time in terms of response time, are these three. In terms of elapsed time, are those two. And in terms of CPU time, it is one here. Actually, it wasn't any of my own SQLs. That was basically recursive SQL, what I see here. For example, let's say I care about this one here, just, just to give you an example. This one has a hint that says rule, so it's been executed by the rule based optimizer. I can click on the hash value. I can see my SQL. I can see the time this SQL consumed. I can see the execution plan, which is this one here. And this one, how many times it was executed? Well, this one was executed 5,000 times, this recursive SQL way too many times. From those 5,000 executions, there are two that are relevant, which are the first one, this is the first one, and this is the last one. So for those executions, if I look at the first one, it gives me the time for that one execution, and it also shows me the band variables for that one execution. And I also get the same for the last execution. Okay? What else do I get? If I go back to the top, I get, for example, the SQL genealogy. What is this piece? Mm -hmm. hmm? Row source. That means all these recursive SQL, for example, a, this SQL requires this SQL, this SQL, this SQL, this SQL, this SQL, this SQL. So it, it's basically indenting. I mean, whenever you have some SQL that is recursive, you will see this like in, like in like the execution plan. But it's not the execution plan. This is which SQL depends on which SQL. Is that clear? It has a. If I had any hot IO blocks, they should be here. If I had any Oracle errors, they would be here. There are no errors. I may have some gaps in the trace file. Gaps mean there, there was some time in the trace file where there was no activity. If I click here, there were some gaps. They were captured. And which which database calls, they happen immediately after the gap. Uh, what else do I have? Uh, parameters with non-default values are also here. It's a little bit of everything. Think, think on trace analyzer like, like AWR is for the entire system to what trace analyzer is for one process. Is, is, that, is that clear? And SQL T for one SQL. So AWR, entire system, trace analyzer, one process, SQL T, one SQL. If we had multiple execution plans, they will show here for any given SQL. Okay, so that that give you an idea of what is the content, what is the content of trace analyzer. 
So let me continue here. So when, when it comes to use stress analyzer, I was saying, we say if we go to stress analyzer run, we execute the stress analyzer and we pass the name of the trace. If we have only one trace. If we have multiple traces, then we pass the name of the text file that contains the names of the traces that we want to analyze. How do I do, what is that unit? I show you the HTML. What else is available? You know there were more than one file. So I show you one file. So what are, what are the other files that we have? If I open this, the file that says txt, this one here, what do, what do we get? What is this? Hmm? No? It's the same thing as the, that you have here. It's the same as this one, or on text format. So you will notice it will talk about response time, it will talk to you about the dose statistics, it will talk to you about the weight events. Mm -hmm. uh, at some point you will see here the SQL genealogy. You see that you see that is there. It's the same report for a different format. Text. Why? Why do we have the two formats? Why do we have HTML and why do we have text? Hmm? Whatever it is comfortable. Yes, some people even today they prefer text. Some people prefer HTML, right? So I give you both. I mean, in the same content, but we have the two of them. I created this one on text a long time ago because I had some, some people say, but I like the format on Ticket Pro. I used to read Ticket Pro. So when I when I get this format, text analysis showed me like if it was Ticket Pro, for them it was perfect because now they were able to see both. I mean, they were able to see light Ticket Pro. Now, little things. We have this SQL here, right? Big SQL that we have. What is this? This is the raw source plan. Now, what do you notice we have here? Estimated number of rows and actual number of rows. And we have them side by side. So when we're trying to understand where is that the CPU is making a mistake, we can see that here. On, on uh, TK Pro, we also have those values, but they are not easy to spot, they are not easy to read, because the, the rows column is this one here. But the estimated canality is the last column on the row source plan, hidden within parentheses. So if you know where to find that, that's fine, but when you want to visually see them side by side, TK Pro gives you the option to see them side by side. You see that here? So those are little details. Just think on, on Threat Analyzer like a tool, like, like like ticket pro, but it makes the life easier. Why? Because it gives you everything that you need for SQL tuning. Well, well, maybe not everything, but it, it, it gives you more than ticket pro. What else do we have? Oh, by the way, all these are the two configuration parameters, so we can configure the tool. What else do we have? What are these two that we have here? If I open this one, guess what is this one? This is, this is ticket pro. So the rest analyzer also gives the ticket pro. And I give the ticket pro sort and no sort. So it gives you everything. Okay? Any any questions so far? No? What is it sorted by last time? <coughs> when it's sort, it's sort by by um, the last time, yes. Does it sum the gaps? <coughs> <coughs> No, not that gaps, but it gives you the total time of idle events. So if the, if the gap is because it was waiting for the user, it tells you how much time it was waiting. Okay, so it, it has many configuration parameters. I, I'm not going to go into the details of explaining the parameters. Now, answering the question that uh, you have here, that is, what happens when we try to use stress analyzer on a different system? Let's say we install stress analyzer on development and we're trying to analyze a trace file from production. How does it work? Well, there is no need to install stress analyzer into the system that produces the trace file. So we don't have to install stress analyzer in production. That would be, the output is going to be almost as good as if we were using stress analyzer in production. Almost. Things that we lose, we lose the explain plan. But as Abel was saying, we usually we don't care about the explain plan. We rather care about the raw source plan. That is what that is what we like. So this this one that we're losing is not a big deal. The target system, the source is production, the target is development. It could be a different version of the database. Let's say production is 11.2 or 3. 
and, and development is 11.2 or 1. That's fine. Or it could be 10 gig. That's fine. It doesn't matter. It doesn't need to, to be higher. It could be lower. It's okay. It could be a different platform. That's also fine. So how do we do this? How do we take a trace from production and we analyze that trace on development? Well, the first step is to generate a trace in production. Then we take a snapshot of the data dictionary from production and implement that snapshot of the data dictionary into development. It doesn't mean I'm going to actually affect the data dictionary. It's just a snapshot, and the snapshot is restored inside trace analyzer, inside the repository of trace analyzer. Okay? And after that, I just execute trace analyzer in my target system. Is that, is that easy? We don't have the buttons anymore for this. That was easy. Okay, anyway, so those are the four steps. Now, how do we actually implement those steps that is here? So, on my source system, I create a trace file, and I copy the trace file to my target system. Then, on my source system, I execute, without installing Trace Analyzer, I execute this script. This script is taking a snapshot of the data dictionary, and it generates a zip file. I take a zip file, now I have two pieces from the source. I have the trace, and I have this, this snapshot of the data dictionary. I take this file, and I unzip this file into my udump directory of the target. So I put this one inside the udump directory of development. I run this script. This is Trace Analyzer Dictionary Export, and this one is Trace Analyzer Dictionary Import. When I run this one here, it's going to read the data dictionary as, as external tables, and it's going to populate inside the Trace Analyzer repository a copy of the snapshot of the data dictionary from the source. Go ahead. Suppose you know, I want to analyze um, data from multiple sources. Can I only have one at a time installed on my target system? Yes. Right now, it's, it's one at a time. You do one analysis at a time. You have multiple sources here. Yes, that is the answer. So, so I would have to then um, do the import on a second source system and analyze the second source file. Let, let's say. I want to analyze data from source one, and then from source two, and then source one again. Do I need to do the imports every time? The import this this part? Yes, this part only. Yes, yes. We're telling for us, it's, it's not that usual that we're taking traces from different sources. But I don't know if your environment you have like production one, production two. I mean, I don't know if you have different databases as as input. Right, it might be different customers. Yeah, when when we do different customers. We do one at a time. So my analysis, I finish with my analysis for this customer, then I move to the next customer. Before the import, any cleanup need to be done on the target? After the, after the import? Before the import? Before the import, no. The import is, is doing the cleanup. Oh. Basically, the way it works, every time you run trace analyzer, like, like I just run trace analyzer, it's always reading from the repository. So. When I have nothing on my repository, the first step is automatically takes a snapshot from your own data dictionary and populate your, your repository, your local repository. So when I do the import here, I basically override whatever you have. When you are done, there is one more script on the same directory that it purges the repository. So if I run the, the script to purge the repository and I run trace analyzer again, it's going to refresh <coughs> from the local. That is an easy way to keep it simple. I mean, if we only keep one version of, of that in repository, it's very simple because every time I run this one here, I just override whatever I have. And when I run Trace Analyzer, I don't have to say from which repository. Is, is that clear? Any, any questions? What is the expense? On the target one. When you say expense, expense in terms of what? Okay, the question is if I run Trace Analyzer, do I affect the target performance? Think Trace Analyzer like any other program. So it, it will consume CPU cycles, yes, like any other program. 
So if it takes five minutes to run, it's consuming five minutes of your resources. Not, not every second of the five minutes going to be CPU. It's like any other program. It's not like it's trying to grab all the resources. You no, know, it's like one more program running on the target. And that happens only when you run direct analyze it. If you're not running direct analyze it, it's, it's not monitoring anything in the background. It's, it's, it's doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Any other question? No. <coughs> OK. So summary here. So direct analyze it actually enhances the capabilities that we have with with DK Pro. It provides more details. So when you are moving into SQL tuning, you have more things to, to review. I mean, you have, now you can see your table, you can see indexes, you can see a, a statistics, you can see the performance of your segments. It has more pieces. Does it give you everything that you need for SQL tuning? No, it doesn't give you everything that you need for SQL tuning. That would be the next tool. That, that is SQL T explain. SQL T explain gives you everything. Okay? So this is like an intermediate. I mean, DK Pro gives you very little. SQL T gives you a lot. Threat Analyzer sits in between. It's for one process, but it gives you enough to work your issue. And in most cases, with Threat Analyzer, that's all you need. In some cases, you have to drill in even more. Okay? So now, if you are dealing with SQL and SQL and tuning now, you're moving from, from tuning your process into tuning your SQL, and if you need more information, then in that case, you may want to use SQL key. Any questions here? So some reference here, those are the notes, and again, I mentioned here this excellent book, I mean, from, from Gary Vinsant, which basically talks about, it talks about the 100460, it doesn't talk about Tracer Analyzer, but it, it's the, the foundations of a, are basically coming from this book. Questions? So, the, um, the SQL T should be installed and uh, available on the database. Okay? SQL, to use SQL T, you have to use it on the database where you want to do the troubleshooting. The analogy that I use for SQL T, Threads and Lasset, you can do it on development, that's fine. With SQL T, you have to install the tool where you want to do the troubleshooting. The analogy is, is, is this, it's like a, you have two cars, and one of them is, is, is causing you some trouble. You have to take that car to the mechanic. You cannot take the other one. You have to take the one that, is, that has some trouble. No, okay. but the idea is that you have some uh, file process, uh, To connect from one to collect a... Like you, you have a, a security on a local laptop, and then connect to the database. No, that's a very good point. There are some methods that allow you something similar, but not exactly what you are asking for. What I asking, you are asking for it is actually going to be, it's going to be done, but it's going to take some time because it requires a rewrite. Which for 12C, I mean, able and myself, we have been talking about, I mean, what, what would be the feature that we would like on this tool? And that is one of the things that we want, is to be able to, to the, the, the point here is, can we install SQL T on this database, on your local database? You don't install anything on that one here. And from here, I collect and bring everything here and do my analysis. So that means I, I will only have to, to install it like on my laptop and connect to different databases. And it's, but it's worthwhile. It's, it's a, there is a challenge. There is a technical challenge there with regarding C logs. But they, they, somehow we will figure it out. No, I, I, I understand what you want. You want to be able to have SQL T like a tool that requires no database. So it connects to the database, it grabs everything, and it has its own repository with no database. No, no, no. no. The answer is no, we cannot do that, but, but it's better 
you wait until we see SQL T, you see a couple of SQL T, then you will understand why, why we cannot do that. SQL T requires a repository, and the repository, the best repository that we can offer is an Oracle database. Right? So SQL T requires to be installed on a database. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the, the execution skills you can have them on your laptop, and SQL T was installed on the database, and from your laptop it connects to the database, and it processes everything on the database, and it brings back the files into your laptop. Yes, that works. Yes, that, that is not an issue. 